Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be looking into a Siemens Logar. This is their previous version of Logar, so actually it's been around for a long time and uh, we are going to be covering the set, the newer version as well, but we're going to start with the older version. So to show you guys how to uh, wire this guy out, the inputs, outputs and work and establish communications with the computer, upload down the program and pretty much we're going to be doing like a uh, general what I call the maintenance on it, which uh, we, we as a service engineers often have to do. So uh, the cable we're going to be using is this guy in here which is a PC Siemens, a Siemens PC logo cable. This cable is no longer manufactured but you can still get these cables for a aftermarket prices there is there's actually quite a lot of people doing the quite a lot of uh, replicas i never use them never try them so i don't know how uh, well they work but this is this this one in here is original one and i will leave you a uh, part number of this cable in description below and the software we're going to be using is a logo soft 8.2 and believe it or not that's the first relay uh smart relay software that is not free so you do have this cheap, don't get me wrong, it's not much money, but it's still not for free like all the other manufacturers do, which is hmm, interesting. So other than that, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started. Here we are. So uh, first thing, as usual, uh, what I do, I'm usually going to look at all the wiring and how the wiring, what the IOs and things like that. So the power... We have L and M, obviously it's DC, uh, 24 volt DC supply for this controller, mainly. And the inputs for this controller are in the, in the front, and I would call it in the front. And all the uh, outputs are in the back. And for this controller, this is the relay controller. And I'm going to talk, that, talk regarding what, what's the setup in there in a minute. So the inputs are pretty much, uh, usually inputs would need a separate supply. But for this controller, uh, it is, it is, uh, this, this supply in here is already supplying the, the inputs in here, which is from I1 uh, all the way to I12. And the key thing in here, as you can see, I marked at the, the input in here as a T. And this is my the power supply in here, which is separate and then from, uh, from my uh, output. It's just a general thing where, uh, what I do. I, I try to keep my outputs away from my inputs with separate power supplies. It's purely just to uh, preserve those inputs, making sure that the current flow in there is undisturbed as much as I can possibly do. So, uh, so yeah, so this T plus in here, which I have, is coming, coming uh, I've got this wire in here. It's more or less going onto my, my, my split bar. From where I am from the split bar, it's pretty much going onto the, let me just go into the onto these uh, switches in here so because of where not these this one in here so as you can see that's my t plus is coming over here and it's sort of powering all my uh, uh buttons in here and those buttons will be sending the signals back to the actual controller right in here so that's pretty much every time the switch is going to be switched it will be sending signal back to uh, these inputs and those inputs are obviously that 24 volt there so that is the key to make sure that using you use the correct power supply so uh, the one you're using to power the the inputs make sure you are powering the uh, now i mean powering the actual controller make sure you're powering the inputs at the same power source so uh, as for the relays as you can see in here i've got the second power supply in here purely because i'm using uh, this guy in here, which we're going to be using in a minute, is my uh, test belt, which I use for uh, testing uh, outputs every now and then, and sort of also different samples. And as you can see, S1 is coming in, they're right in the middle in here. That's my com in here, and sort of tells you Q1 and Q2 on each of the sides. One of them is going to be running the belt forward, and one of them is going to be running the belt in uh, backwards. And that is pretty much going to be reflecting, as you can see, my outputs in here. Uh, minus this time s minus is coming to my uh, lamps in here and sort of a plus will be uh, coming as you can see down here 200 and 201 will come in, will be coming from the relays and as you can see in here that that is going to be the plus required to turn the lamps on so that's pretty much how would we work to make sure that the uh, uh, inputs are powered for this at least for this controller inputs are powered with the uh, whoop Make sure the lamp is out of the way. Input the power with the same power supply you power in the actual controller, and uh, output you can pretty much power uh, however you want as long as the com is. You can do minus as well if you want, negative, but it's up to you. So that's regarding when it comes down to wiring. In here, you have a memory slot in here, 
if I can dig it out. There we go. So usually that's, in many cases, usually that is a uh, empty, there's nothing there, but uh, this controller does have one. So this is where you can load your program and transfer them to another controller if you wish to. That's not what we're gonna do today. Uh, we need to take that one out. And that is also a, your uh, communication port for your, why did I put that back in there? I don't know. Communication port for your uh, cable. And this cable, as I already said in the, at, the, at the beginning of the video, is discontinued. So you can still get it from aftermarket and things like that. So once you plug that in there, uh, from there on you pretty much uh, will be ready as soon as you set your uh, controller into the transfer mode. So there's a couple of ways to do it. You can uh, click in the SC and uh, OK uh, like that to get that. You will get to this menu where you can set your clock and set your parameters. We're not going to be going through that, but just giving you a good gist. And uh, by holding OK and clicking uh, both buttons sideways, this one, this one and OK together, it will get, enter you into the windows like that where you can uh, program uh, your controller. And one of the things in here, we can enter the PC slash card. This is where we need to be, uh, PC dash logo and press OK. And as soon as it's in, it is in this mode, you are uh, be, uh, will be able to read what's inside the controller and uh, pretty much load the uh, program into the controller as well. You do need to make sure you are in this window, otherwise the the control, the, the actual transfer will not work. So having done that, so let's jump on a computer, computer and let's see what's inside this controller. Here we are. So now in front of the computer, the program we're going to be loading, it is going to be our, this guy in here, Logos of Comfort uh, V8.2. That's my version. Your version could be different. That is fine. And from there on, uh, once we are uh, in a program, you, you can do one thing straight away, is jump straight away, load it from, uh, from the actual uh, logo. Just go over it and see which one you, these guys, these two guys in there, from and to, and as you, as you can see, logo to PC, and this one says PC to logo. So we want logo uh, to PC. Let's check it out what's inside that controller. Let's do the test. I quickly uh, show you the where to find out what com you're in. As you can see, I'm on com 9 and manager just go in your device manager go under your usbs and make sure you find out under which com that uh, connection has been uh, selected and that is mine is com9 so you can see that's what you should say if you have the same cable and things like that so once you do that uh, you should be able to go it's, 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 it, it, this is all the program that is inside of the plc so we are going to be wiping that so because we're going to be doing something already pre-programmed a small program just to test uh, that belt and things out but this is what the old program was in there so there's a couple of ways to you can do it i don't program it like this that looks too gibberish to me so i i usually go as you can see there's a little window and they convert to ladder so and this is much more uh, readable and understandable for me but again this is a personal preference as you can see all this everything that's in there has been like that and I, that's how I program but again different people do it different ways you can uh, simulate it in here if you wish to so you can you go in simulations mode you can like uh, click things on and off not the time on Oop. here we go on to IO so you can uh, click on and off and uh, go and do that there we go so just, just this is where you can in simulation mode you can uh, do it down here but uh, yeah just play around that's pretty much how that logo would work. And once you pretty much uh, finished uh, with the program, as you can see, it asks you to save in a different format if you wish to. And once you are happy, let's say you want to back this up, just go in here and click save. So uh, under the save, you just tells you what it is and just save it as it is. Whatever the, uh, your, your control is in this way, you are going to be fully backed up. And that's pretty much what we as a service engineers do. Make sure all our programs are backed up. And if you want to make some changes, you can do so. But for us, we have created a uh, smaller program. So let's say we want to load our different program into it. So all you need to do, we just uh, open. And I, I call it as a test. So let's uh, shut this one down. No, we don't want to say in this one as well. We just said, as you can see, I have programmed everything this way because that's the way is again personal preference. And once you're happy, you are uh, straight away able to, as you can see, PC to logo test. 
if everything was okay and by the way before we go sometimes when you write the program by default the, your controller setting is going to be different and to change that you go to tools and you can see down there is a hard a select the hardware so by clicking on that one again my one is already there because it's by default been uh, I already selected that one before in last time I was, I was working with but if it's not as you can see on this I put the full, full screen of the window in there these four digits uh, on a part number if you can see right uh, right in the corner in the part number is 0BA1 uh, that's the part number you really need to know I'll show you in a minute once we jump back on the camera which it really is and that's the one you need to select in the list make sure that is the case if that is not the case it will fail to load and say he's not he's unable to communicate so yeah so do, oop, uh, do, do make sure that is the case so we are fine as you can see connection is good and uh, usually in here if something goes wrong it will pop an error then you know for sure if something's wrong with your hardware selection so once that done as you can see the program now has been loaded into the controller so let's jump back to the actual plc and play around a little bit here we are once you are done so unplug the uh, cable move it away for my case for my part i'm going to put that one back on why not and then press escape go into start and you are pretty much good to go and there we go so by clicking as you can see every time you are clicking you can see in the screen which uh, ios are on which are not and here's my stop down here and as you can see i can just click that one and it goes backwards it's pretty much very very basic uh, program but that uh, hopefully you are getting the gist and this is the number i was talking about zero b a one in here that's the one that determines in the program what you need to select to get the correct controller so that ladies and gentlemen will do hopefully that gives you a good understanding how uh, old uh, siemens logo works and how to get program in and out and bit of wiring in the next video we're going to look at a newer version a new version of a siemens logo we're going to go through how to get it connected and create again a small program just for demonstration go through the wiring and uh, pretty much uh, test it all out. So on that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it's helping you out. If you do like the video, do smash that like, and um, don't forget to comment below if you have any questions, answer them, and uh, do ask them, and I'll answer them as soon and as accurate as I can. On that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.